everybody. I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to Get Real with Rick Dancer. And today we're going to have some fun. Every, all of us are into health. I mean, I think most of us are. Maybe it's just people that get old like me. <laughs> I was listening to a broadcast today and they said um, that 65 and older, which that's me, um, that's our biggest concern is health and what's going on in our lives. And um, and one of the clients I've had for God, years is New Leaf Hyperbarics and Wellness Center, Matt McCarl. And uh, that's what they do uh, from light therapy to hyperbarics to massage to, I mean, Matt, if there's a new thing that comes out, except now, if Matt tells you he can do acupuncture, don't believe him because he brings out toothpicks. And I said, no, stop. I don't want to go any farther. <laughs> I'm kidding. The first time I went to a guy to get acupuncture, he was a friend of mine and he literally brought out a little shot glass with toothpicks. And he said, before we start, Rick, I wanted to tell you, I'm going to try something a little different today. And I'm looking at these toothpicks. I'm going, you are not sticking those in me. He goes, no, I just thought we'd see what you look like, what your face looked like when you were in panic mode. So um, we're going to talk to an expert on hyperbarics today. Uh, Matt's having a seminar coming up on Tuesday, the 20th. Uh, from six to eight in his office and you do need to register so that they have enough room for everybody um, and he'll be talking a little bit about that as well what's going to be going on there but i thought it'd be also a chance for us a, a lot of you guys when i bring up hyperbarics you still you've heard of it you've seen it you know lebron james does it but you really don't know what it does and how it works so we're going to talk about that tonight and it's brought to you by well who would have ever guessed? <laughs> Matt McCarl. Matt, uh, I'm going to pull that out of there. There's Matt McCarl right there. And this is Zaid Ratazi. Is it, did I say that right? Uh, you did. You did. Matt, Matt helped me practice. So it's not like I'm just that. <laughs> Except, you know, I used to be pretty good when I was on the news. The only names I would, because because a lot of names, Indian names and um like even Polish, they look like what they sound. If you just take your time and don't panic. Now, with uh, Japanese and Chinese, uh-uh. No, I used to call the new, they'd get a new prime minister of, China, of Japan or China or something. And I'd say, and the new prime minister of China said today, <laughs> and there's no way I'm saying X, Y, E, E, Z, V, E, L, M, N, P. It was too hard. So I appreciate yours being easier. So Z, why don't you tell people, um, or Zade, why don't you tell people a little bit about what what you do and why you know so much about hyperbarics? Sure, sure. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on this uh, uh, podcast. I thought uh, you were going to end up calling me Dave for the whole uh, conversation <laughs> because I've actually been there and um, I've had people. My first name is Zade, and they've said Dave. And I said, no, Zaid. Oh, Dave. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you want to call me Dave, no problem at all. But let's yeah. carry on uh, talking. Um, yes. In terms of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, I got involved quite a long time ago. And I was able to see firsthand what the procedure um, actually did. At first, I started my practice up in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And I started that in 1999, so it's been um, quite a journey. At the time, we didn't really have hyperbaric oxygen therapy for um, really accessible for the public. In Canada, there's about nine hospitals that did emergency uh, medicine. And when I learned about wound care and how um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy helped the body recover, and um, even uh, reduce the incidence and save limbs from being amputated. Really? I thought this procedure needed to be a little more available. And throughout, so I did a lot of research uh, to make sure that there was good scientific validation uh, towards this procedure. And as I did, um, we can see the extrapolation of so many uh, human health conditions that the body could really uh, use the help and the aid of this additional oxygenation and oxygen therapy. Because they back in the day wasn't most of it, and and even today in hospitals, the big huge tanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's expensive, and you got these big old tanks, yeah. and and it wasn't really something accessible. Where now, I mean. 
Mr. Spoiled Matt has, you know, one in he jokes on his water. Notice I waited till he did that. Um, he had, you know, he has one in his home. But you can you can have for cancer treatment and things like that. People are have these now. You can rent them or buy them for your home. The evolution of hyperbarics has definitely taken off. Uh, um, there's still a lot of I see out in the public some confusion about um, the um, the application of the procedure and uh, how to get the most out of hyperbarics and if hyperbarics is going to be a uh, part of your protocol. What so, don't they understand? What do they not understand? Um, well, you know what? It's there's there's a frequency. Uh, if we're looking to recreate certain data, and so let's say someone is coming in uh, for a medical condition, and um, just like taking a course of antibiotics, uh, we don't take the course of the medication once a week or just as needed. Now, there are some times that you can uh, provide a delayed hyperbaric oxygen therapy, but a lot of times they might be done in packages of three to five sessions if we're trying to reduce uh, the, um, have an anti-inflammatory uh, kickstart. And um, a lot of times uh, inflammation and pain can go hand in hand. And so we'll take a look at a series of 10 sessions, but they're typically daily, sometimes even twice a day for a short period of time to get and maximize those benefits um, out of it. So the, the delivery of hyperbaric is, is important. Um, sometimes it's being utilized with some other procedures. Um, you mentioned uh, cancer uh, uh, treatments. Hyperbaric is not an FDA approved treatment for cancer, but there are some pretty significant physiological benefits that can be gained um, when someone is undergoing uh, cancer treatments by combining uh, hyperbaric towards that. But there's also um, some medications that we want to um, uh, we want to be aware of. So by integrating hyperbaric into certain treatments uh, you can have a radio sensitization effect chemo sensitization to help uh, some of these uh, conventional therapies uh, work a little better reduce the side effects of that there are some in, um, independent uh, uh, studies on a direct tumorcidal effect as well um, so understanding what we're trying to gain outcome with and provide the best uh, procedures. Uh, People still, it, it's interesting because like when we try to boost this on YouTube, sometimes we have to change the intros and kind of mask some of what we're talking about because uh, YouTube and, and other social media things still think this is like, you know, junk science and, and, you know, bro science or something. Right. And, and it is interesting. I never thought about it because to me, it's oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> on steroids. But I mean, it's not like you're, you know, but they do the same thing with, uh, I had an acupuncture client and they did yeah. the same thing with that. It's like, you know, if it's not the standard take a pill and pharmaceutical, they don't, they don't believe it. Well, I'll tell you one thing, when you say that, um, you know, what's the most important nutrient that the human body relies on? And it is oxygen. Yeah. And we are oxygen dependent human beings. That means if we don't breathe for five minutes, uh, we don't have much energy, if any. And so what you're doing when you're in a hyperbaric chamber is you're getting an extra dose of oxygen that doesn't get wasted. So think of it like a supplement. The best way to supplement physiologically available oxygen is to go into a chamber, um, which allows greater delivery. And that's every time you breathe in the chamber, every time your heart beats, it's an extra dose. So we are cumulatively getting more available oxygen for tissue and that generates extra energy and now it's energy for your body to function repair and regenerate quicker faster and stronger so z you're kind of speeding up the recovery part or the healing process because you're saying okay a natural body something yeah. happens i need to do something and maybe that's you know if it's cancer treatment maybe i need this treatment but then i have this oxygen that takes that and just gives it like firepower to just kind of hit it out there and say what you could do 
you know, what would take a month or two, I can, we can speed up that process and see how that's going to work. Natural, correct. The natural process. So if you cut your skin, skin heals naturally. Uh, right. It's tissue, the brain, the same thing. All organs have that innate ability. Uh, to heal. So what you're doing when you're providing a surplus of oxygen, a surplus of energy for the skin, the tissue in, um, in the hand or in the brain uh, to have more available energy so it can do its job uh, better. It's the easiest way. Are you surprised at, and either one of you, Matt, you can get pipe in here too on this. Um, are you guys surprised at how, I mean, how basic this is? I mean, really, it's, yeah. it's like, it's like we have, we, it's, it's, it's all here. And it's like, you know, if, when the, when the world was made, whoever you believe created it, put this oxygen in here and it's not just for us to breathe. It's for, to help yeah. all other processes in our body. And now when you, with the miracle of science and, and people that are really a hell of a lot smarter than me to take that and, and boost that into there, um, that's pretty phenomenal in terms of healthcare. Yeah. Now, now can I tell you why um, the chamber, the pressure chamber is needed? No, people often can't. ask. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I just wanted to catch you. I caught Matt once. I wanted to catch you sure, on one. Sure. But the very common question is why can't I just take a mask and breathe extra oxygen? Why can't I drink oxygen? Uh, they have some oxygen drinks and why can't I bathe in it? Here's the thing. The human body gets oxygen in um, in the air that you breathe going into the lungs. So we want to increase the dose in the lungs. But if you check your pulse oxygen, typically the average, most people are in 97, 98, 99% full. You can't fill up those. Those are red blood cells that carry oxygen. They're full. Even with the mere 21% air that we breathe, we breathe out about 16%. We can't force that. That's why you can give CPR. It's a waste oxygen. You just can't put into your body. When you're in a chamber, now extra oxygen, just even in air, get into the bloodstream through a transfer of pressure. That goes into the plasma, which is the liquid part of the blood. So it super saturates. So the red blood cells don't get the extra oxygen. The extra oxygen goes in the liquid. Now liquid gets everywhere into the body past areas of inflammation where there's pain the 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 brain is bathed by cerebrospinal fluid liquid so very easily we transfer oxygen to the tissue with pressure going a little deeper and now more energy into areas that are you know have um, wounds or injuries and now the body has that energy to, to repair to regenerate. There's also a really big uh, uh, process because it's so energetic, your, your bone marrow releases extra stem cells. So it's called stem cell mobilization. You're in, you're in growth mode. So you start naturally producing more stem cells, new cells. And that goes into all parts of the body, into the brain called neurogenesis. Uh, Matt, you can probably use some new brain cells, right? All the time. Up there. No, <laughs> I try to reserve mine for special moments. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like you said, it's a very simple process, but we need to be in a pressure chamber, and that's why we have them um, available. And now it's technology that is advancing um, nature, um, what we need from the environment, just like if you're maybe trying to get extra nutrients from uh, from fruits, you might juice to get those extra uh, nutrients and take them. Or you might take a supplement where they take vitamin C and put it into um, um, a, a pill form. Right. And so think of this like an oxygen supplement. And with that extra oxygen, the body does some pretty amazing uh, things. But the difference here is that you can't just take it or no. breathe no. more no. oxygen. You no. need to be in that special tank yes. to have that pressure to yes. be, because to, to, that's that's the magic. Um, so if, if you drink um, some of these oxygen, I, I, it goes into the stomach, which has a thick mucosal barrier. We don't get oxygen delivery 
through a thick mucosal barrier like the skin or uh, the GI tract. Um, and that's why there's two tracts when you go down your throat. One goes into the stomach and then one goes in the trachea into the lungs. There's 500 million alveoli, little lung sacs, little lung tissue that are wrapped by blood vessels, capillaries, 33%. And that's how we get our oxygen delivery. So we're going into the normal delivery process of the lungs and super dosing extra oxygen into the bloodstream. It's the only true way to get extra physiologically available oxygen into the body. So Matt, who, who are the people you treat athletes, accident victims, um, you know, autism. I mean, there's a ton of things that people would never think. Absolutely. That- yeah. When I get all kinds of us, we've been seeing a lot of post um, MVA folks for post motor vehicle concussions and just really, helps them recover from that concussion they get rid of their brain fog their headaches everything goes away sooner than it would normally because of that extra oxygen and and sadly a lot of the uh, emergency rooms aren't diagnosing concussions like they should be because they'll just be if they don't see like a bleeding or anything in the ct scan they don't see bleeding or anything crazy in the brain they're like oh you're, you're good just go home and rest you know oh you have a headache here take you know here, we'll get you some Vicodin or something for the headaches. Um, but coming in, we help that relieve way faster. Like Zaid was saying, that extra oxygen just helps that brain heal way faster. Do you guys see more people, um, I, I'm hoping this is true, um, trying to get away from pharmaceuticals and, and trying to get more into natural naturopathic kind of... You're definitely seeing, um, now you're seeing more healthy people utilizing um, hyperbaric. And that's where I think Matt um, is moving towards um, when he was talking about home health, uh, people that can have accessible um, um, hyperbaric uh, for um, just like a supplement uh, for use. You know, in in today's uh, time, we're seeing a lot uh, more post-COVID yeah. Uh, patients with long COVID that are making some really good achievements and responses uh, from the extra oxygenation. Um, but again, um, the procedure is very simple. It's you don't really feel anything. You go in and all you're doing is breathing normally. And the human body is just getting more and more oxygen. And uh, with that, uh you know, every cell is metabolically active. Um, the immune organs, organ systems, the immune system uh, as well can get revved up and really boosted. I, it's like an hour nap in your day. Where yeah. when I, The first time I came out of that thing, um, Matt looked at me and he goes, how you doing? I said, okay, this reminds me of when I was a kid and I got really stoned. <laughs> I felt, I was just like, you know, it just felt euphoric and I just had, but, but I actually, Matt, and requ- not didn't require me to, but suggested that I stay there for 10 or 15 minutes to just relax before I got in my car and just drove off because I was really relaxed. And it was, um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, you, you look at what's online. I look at, you know, things passing by ice baths and I've done it. I, it is great. I love it. Take a hot take a sauna, then get an ice bath. And that's something, but could you imagine this? Cause this is like real physiological, you know, I mean, as a, as somebody who works out a lot and does, you know, is, is really active. Um, what, what a great thing to have, um, at my disposal, you know, for yeah, post recovery. Yeah. Recovery. So Matt, why are you bringing Zaid <clears throat> to Eugene for, I mean, obviously he's a cool guy and he's <laughs> knowledgeable, you know, and, um, but, but what, what's the purpose of bringing him here for people and wh- why would they come to this, um, this evening with you? Well, first of all, Zade's been my physician that I work with for four or five years now. And so his wealth of knowledge is amazing. I met him eight years ago during the international high breaks association conference and I just my screen went black, Rick. Anyway, you're still there. Um, perfect. And so we became friends 
started working closer together. He now does uh, my pre-screenings for me. So when folks come in, he's the gentleman that looks at all their medical background to make sure that they're, oh, there's no okay. reason we couldn't see somebody here in office. And so his wealth of knowledge just needs to be shared here locally. And he happens to be coming through the area and said, absolutely, I'd love to do a talk for your clients, folks in the area that just want to learn more about hyperics and why, why this is such a treatment that everybody needs to know more about. Now you're, I see on the, on the flyer here, you're also doing light therapy. Do you, you both are, are you, are you in that too, Zaid? Is that one of your things? Well, 25 years I've been doing hyperbarics and about 24 years I've been doing light therapy. Wow. So therapy I, is, yeah. I love, and Matt knows, I, I love yeah. hyperbarics is great, but he put me in that light bed one time on a, yeah. I don't know what, blue, red, I don't know what it was. I was in a psychedelic, <laughs> it was like being in disco in the 70s. Yeah. And um, man, I came out of there and that was just 20 minutes of pure joy. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. We did a lot. I helped in the design of that uh, light bed. And because, you know, we wanted to recreate, um, uh, we wanted to really try to recreate nature, um, you know, in an indoor environment um indoor environment um you get a lot of positive ions you don't get that nature's negative ion so we have um so when you're inside there you're actually breathing uh really clean um oxygenated air and um that's one of the uh keys and then you're getting a full dose of light therapy um and you just have to close your eyes and Hopefully, 20 minutes later, um, sometimes people do fall asleep in, in there as well, you know. Uh, but it's a very quick procedure, and there's different settings and modes uh, that can be used to help enhance certain um, uh, physiological states. So sometimes people will come out of the chamber, and there's... Uh, one setting called power healing and it's just the best of sunlight's nature's uh wavelengths uh coming at you uh, some people might have a little more pain and inflammation uh, and so there's customizations uh to that so it's a great procedure uh to just um really easy uh to apply and the other part of light therapy that's done is what we call targeted uh, light therapy and we take I don't know if you've tried the pad where you you wrap it nice and tight over a local area and it's so strong in that local area of having an anti-inflammatory uh, um, um, you're increasing localized blood flow so similar to what we do what we do in hyperbarics what we're trying to do is get more um, oxygen into an area but here we're localizing it so there's a strong response on that so um, if there's any specific area some people might have a specific area that's bothering them in their neck or their low back um, um, there's a frontal lobe one or a brain uh, a cap as well for neurocognitive so what we do is um, on cases where we want to target uh, we'll use those light pads because it's um, it creates that strong localized effect. It goes very well hand in hand with hyperbarics. We actually call it targeted hyperbaric. In the chamber, I can't tell the oxygen. We'll just go to the wrist or um, wherever. So we can actually uh, use both technologies to complement each other and get the best out of uh, the hyperbaric towards a localized effect yeah when i broke my wrist mountain biking <clears throat> matt said get down here he put me in the hyperbaric chamber with the red light therapy on my wrist that was broken and i think it was a combination of that and not listening to my doctor because he told me to keep the cast on all the time and i started oh, okay. and not to go to the gym so i took it off and went to the gym and then i put it on at night and but i went in and i came into matt like three times yeah. went into him like at, I think it was a three week appointment or something. And he said, 
oh my gosh, what are you doing? I've never seen anybody with so much mobility. And I said, well, I'm just doing what you told me. I mean, kind of lied, but I was like, well, basically I didn't listen to you. I got hyperbarics and light therapy and I uh, took my hand out of the damn cast <laughs> and it worked. And I want people to know too, when you're in the light bed, it's like a suntan bed. I mean, it's not like a chamber, like the, uh, the, the hyperbarics. And I, if someone's out there, I, it'd be really good to come to your seminar because your talk, because you just, you, I think a lot of people, I'm a little claustrophobic. And when I, when I thought about it, I thought, eh, then I got in there and it's, you'll be able to see it. Matt can show you what these look like. And then of course, you know, Matt doing things a little, you know, over the top all the time. He has a big one too, like a tent that you could take a family. Oh. In. <laughs> you could take it. You could take an army in this thing. So for people in wheelchairs or people who are a little claustrophobic, you can get into the bigger um, chamber and you're not going to feel claustrophobic or something. But I think that'd be a really good reason if somebody has somebody at home and they're thinking about it, go to the talk because you'll be able to see in person what it is. And that's, that's the, you know, it won't be scary anymore. You know, I'd be more scared to go to a hospital on those big, huge, you know, chambers than in this thing is like a puffy little, it feels like you're an astronaut <laughs> going for a ride. So, so this is when Matt, again, I'm going to put the brochure up and you to explain to people. Tuesday, so next Tuesday, the 20th at 6 to 8 p.m. here at the office, um, as long as we have enough room. If we start getting a huge response, we may have to find somewhere off site, but hopefully we can do it right here in the office. And that way folks can take a quick little tour and see everything that we've just been talking about. The power bed, the light pads, the hyperbaric chambers, so they can feel super comfortable making an appointment and coming in. Okay, and the, you just expanded your office, so you should have plenty of space. Good lord, yep. you have like a penthouse up there. <laughs> oh, not quite that big. <laughs> All right, Zaid, thank you so much. It's really great talking to you, um, Matt. Good, thanks for doing what you do for people in Absolutely. the community to keep them healthy and that kind of thing. And um, I will, we'll get this out there and let people know what's going on Tuesday the twentieth. Thank, awesome. thank you. All right, see you guys later. All right, thank you.